Hi, I'm Olli from Custom Tools and I will be your webinar host today. With me today, I have uh, François Simon, who will demonstrate you how to integrate Microsoft Dynamics NAV to SolidWorks live on his PC. You can use the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel if you have any questions, and we will make room after the session for more questions to let you know, follow the presentation better. Uh, we expect this webinar to be somewhere in the range of 25 to 30 minutes. The webinar will be recorded and made available for all attendees later on. Okay, with that, let's get started. In today's webinar, you will learn how to export your CAD bill of material from SOLIDWORKS to Microsoft Dynamics NAV ERP system without having to leave your CAD environment. You will learn how to bring consistency to your design and manufacturing processes by keeping your ERP data in sync with your CAD data. Uh, you will learn how to save time and money by eliminating manual data entry between various systems and thus also by eliminating costly errors due to inconsistent data, which are quite often really expensive to fix uh, later on in the process. Before we go to the live demo, let's shortly talk about the custom tools way of um, doing these type of integrations. When it comes to ERP integrations, our approach is that you should never perform the same task twice. Data is entered in SOLIDWORKS only once and exported from inside SOLIDWORKS with a couple of clicks to your ERP system. We have also productized these connectors. This means that you do not need to hire a developer to establish the connection. You can just configure the connection inside custom tools inside your SOLIDWORKS CAD environment. That means if you stick with the standard versions of SOLIDWORKS and your ERP system. Do note, how, however, that you do not do need to understand the inner workings of your ERP system to be able to configure the connection. So it might be beneficial, beneficial to involve your ERP administrator or your ERP consultant in the process. The connector works in two directions. Firstly, when you're designing, you can pull in metadata like item numbers, project information, and various lookup lists, such as units of measure, and link this directly with your CAD items. This helps keep your data consistent throughout the process and removes the need for manual copy pasting of fields or entries from ERP to CAD or vice versa. And when you're release, uh, ready to release your design, you can export your engineering bomb with a couple of clicks to your ERP system. So you automatically create items in ERP based on your CAD data. All of this saves you a lot of time and errors, which are expensive to fix later in, in later stages of the process. And by the way, our connector supports both on-premises Microsoft Dynamics NIV environments, as well as the newer cloud-based Business Central instances as they both share the same web services interface technology. So this was a brief overview of what we're about. And now um, we'll go to the exciting part and I'll uh, give control to Francois for the live demo. Yeah, thank you Oli for the introduction. And now let's move to the uh, live demo. So during my presentation, I will show you how you can easily integrate SOLIDWORKS to Dynamics NAV. An integration to an ERP system is not just about exporting BOM and creating item from SOLIDWORKS to Dynamics NAV. There are different aspects which need to be taken into account and which we are going to go through during the uh, webinar. So let's get started. First, we are going to have a look at the ERP search, which allows you to run a live search against NAV. This could be used, for instance, to search for items that already exist in uh, NAV and link uh, them with um, a link attribute of the item card from the NAV with custom properties of your SOLIDWORKS documents. This could be used, for example, to link 
purchase component that have an existing reference in NAV with the corresponding part. So for instance here I have uh, uh, Microsoft Dynamics Nav, I have the item and I would like to search for this uh, connected uh, connecting road which will be used in my uh, piston so I can select a part. I can open here the uh, properties and all what you see here can really be configured based on how you are working. So here I can click on that button here. So I can run a live search, so all the list of uh, items that you see here are coming directly from NAV, but I can use any of the uh, attributes here as filters. So for instance, I could search for a specific item number, which is here, and then I just need to click here on the link button to automatically pull all the information to the custom properties. So as Oli just mentioned, no more copy pasting and all the information that you take from NAV are just copied to the custom properties just with very few clicks. Then I just click on OK here. And this is what we had for the uh, import. So once we are ready with our assembly, we can export it to NAV. During the export, you will automate the bomb and item creation from SolidWorks to NAV. As I mentioned earlier, a NIAP integration is not just about exporting SolidWorks data to NAV. What we have in SolidWorks is not always what you expect to see in NAV, and this is where our NAV module becomes very powerful. Pushing data from SolidWorks to NAV needs to follow some rules as uh, NAV is a lot more strict with regards to how data needs to be formatted compared to SOLIDWORKS. So if I click on export here, if you are using multiple companies in NAV, then you can choose where to run the export. If you have multiple companies defined in NAV, you're also able to define uh, the list of companies available for the export in custom tools. At this point, you will have an overview of what will happen if you click on the export. As you can see on the uh, right side of the screen, we are using different colors so that the user quickly understands what is going to happen if you click on export. You do not want to run a blind export and being able to preview what will happen will also help you to reduce errors. Already at this point, we could prevent the export if some of the specification are not fulfilled as the export button could be grayed out. We will check that out later. So here we have uh, different colors. So the green color means that we are going to create item and also bomb in NAV. A gray color means that the item will be ignored as those component, uh, the components are ignored as they are marked as purchased. There are two other colors that we are using, the red and yellow, but this also will be reviewed later. As we can see on the export dialog, for the non-purchased uh, component, we do not have any item numbers. The item number will be generated during the export using a sequence from NAV. In NAV, you can have multiple number series, which can be used to generate an item number. Here we are using the property called category to define which sequence to use. The item number will be generated during the export to NAV and the value written back to the custom properties of the SOLIDWORKS files. So let's run the export. So during the export to NAV, we can also run some file conversion rules. Here we are creating a PDF file for the top level and then inserting the link to the converted documents uh, to the item card in NAV. Now the export is completed, so we can see already from the export dialog that the item number has been generated, so they are written here, and they have also been written to the um, document properties of the, uh, of the uh, SOLIDWORKS file. So here we can check the item number for the uh, assembly, so it start with FA, so I can go here, and we can just search for that, so here I have the uh, I have the uh, piston that I have uh, created. So we can see that the item was created in NAV. In addition, we have also mapped uh, custom properties from SOLIDWORKS as attribute of the item card. So we can like freely define which custom property we want to map to which attribute. So here you have the description. I also have the GTN uh, property, the base unit of measure, 
lot of different uh, attributes have been filled during the export. We have also developed our own uh, code unit uh, to basically to allow you to embed a preview image of the SOLIDWORKS files in the item card. So this is what we see here. And also here we have a link to the uh, PDF that was uh, converted during the process. Now we can move, to, I can close the PDF and let's close that item. So I also have a lot of other items that were created during the process, but we can check here that we have here the uh, bill of material. So we have the possibility to define also here um, how um, we, we have the possibility to define how bombs are created. For example, we can define that the bomb are created only for manufactured assemblies or and sub-assemblies. So we can also exclude the bomb creation for uh, sub-assemblies that are purchased. Uh, so if I open here the uh, bomb, uh, so first items are created in nav and then they are added as bomb lines in, in uh, the bomb that we have just uh, created, as well as the total quantity that we see here. Regarding the quantity, Custom Tools also offers uh, the possibility to use specific properties to manage the bomb quantity for specific item. So for example, here we can see that uh, I have like one of those items, I can close here the bomb and I can return to it works. So for that part here, which is the, uh, the, the, the bearing, so we can see that the quantity is two. But if a part is made from a sheet metal plate or a profile, then the part needs to be cut to a specific size. In SOLIDWORKS, the quantity is defined per part. So by default, the quantity is always one. But in NAV, from a specific profile, you may be able to cut three parts because you buy the, the, the profile that may be three meters and you only need to uh, use one meter. So custom tools allows you to define a custom quantity to be used in the bomb, and this is exported to nav. So for example, I'm going to select uh, that part. So you can see I have one here, and then I also have the same one here. So I can open here the uh, properties. So I can define here that for example, this is made from a profile, and I will here define that this is 0 0.5 because I know I only need like half of the uh, plates to create that part. Earlier, I mentioned that NAV is a lot more strict in regards to how data needs to be formatted or filled. On the other side, SOLIDWORKS offers a lot more freedom to how custom property can be filled, which can lead to a lack of consistency in how your data are managed. To address that issue, custom tools can ensure that data is always filled correctly by setting a limit on the number of characters or defining that the custom property is always said in capital letters or that uh, custom property needs to have a value in order to run the export. So for instance here, I'm going to add some uh, additional uh, information. I'm going to remove here the uh, description because I know the description too is a compulsory field. So we click on OK. I will select another part open the property and I will add uh, some more description so that I know that I have a limit of 20 characters for the uh, description one. So when I go back to the export here, so we can see here that now I have some uh, problem here because here uh, I can, I get some, you see here the uh, export button is, has been uh, grayed out because I have some red lines. So I can see here that the description too does not have any value. So in order for me to uh, export it, I need to, uh, to, 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 to give it a value. And I believe I don't have 20 characters here, but here this line should have been also in uh, red. But anyway, here I can also see that um, the, uh, the quantity here is now one. So if you remember earlier, it was two, but I put that it should be like 0 0.5. So as two of these parties used and we are going to also update the uh, also update the, uh, the the quantity in the bomb okay so let's fix uh, that here so you have the the bearing so i'm going to define a description for the uh, uh, for that part here 
and then we are we can return to the export so here let's just have it let's just call it a piston and what i want to make sure is that the the value that i have here for the description too is also different than what we have in nav because this will have be quite important so here we have the bearing and we can see here that before it used in nav now it's a uh, mechanics for that part okay so let's uh, go back to the export here okay so the third aspect that uh, I would like to speak here is how to manage changes and updates between SOLIDWORKS and NAV. Existing item or bombs in NAV needs to be updated. Sometimes the value is uh, the value of a specific custom property will be modified in SOLIDWORKS and the change needs to be pushed in NAV. Dealing with updates can sometimes be challenging, but the real question is to define who is the master for what. Custom tools offers the possibility to control how to change how the changes are handled, allowing you to update certain custom property in nav if SolidWorks is a master, or preventing the update in nav if the master uh, is uh, an attribute in the item card. The same applies to your bomb. You can control if a bomb in nav can be updated or not. So as you can see here, this uh, this is something that I have. Is something that is different in NAV. And I have defined that for the description one, SOLIDWORKS is the master. So if any change are applied, then the uh, part will be updated. So you, if you remember earlier, I added the word like webinar. So we can see here that we are going to update the item. And for that part here, I just added the word piston. If earlier we had top. So as you can see here, we are not going to do any changes just to prevent that we only update what needs to be updated. So here we have the yellow color, also the bomb will be updated with the right quantity and also the right information. So I just need to click here on export and the, the bomb is now like updated. So um, let's return to SOLIDWORKS and also another uh, important aspect is the CAD world is very different from the EAP world. This will have an impact on how you will integrate the two systems. I'm not going to go very deep here, but we are all familiar with how you can manage configuration or revision in SOLIDWORKS. Well, those terms do not really exist in NAV. In NAV, you do not have item uh, revisioning. You only have it for the bomb. Also, you may have one SOLIDWORKS part with multiple configuration. In SOLIDWORKS, you will have an item for every configuration. So let's have a look at how you can manage SOLIDWORKS configuration in uh, with our integration. So here I have some, some assembly that I have already uh, predefined. So I can search for uh, one part. So here I have this part. And this part has three different configuration. As we can see here, I have the configuration 100, 150, and 200. Okay, so I'm going to uh, use two of those uh, configurations. So now I have the configuration 200, but I'm going to use the configuration 100. I'm going to save my assembly. Here we are going to go back to the export. So when we go to the export, we can see that those two configurations are listed as separate items. When I click on export, custom tool will create two separate items in nav. For that part, that uh, for that same part, as we can see from the nav item number that I'm going now to generate. So here I just click on OK. OK, so let's try again. Uh, it has failed. Um, let me do one thing quickly here from the properties. I'm just going to delay the item number. But as we can see here, we have also like item number that were uh, generated like separate separately. So let's see if we have 
bit more luck now. Okay, so now it works. So as we can see here, we have uh, so the, the 776, so we can go back to uh, NAV. So it was like that, and we had here the uh, tube, here we had the uh, mainframe here, as we can see. And here we had the uh, item, the one that was uh, 200, and also the one that was uh, 100, that is exported here. So during that live demo, I only used the existing features of our nav modules, which means that only configuration was done to prepare that webinar. There were no programming. Of course, it's possible to add some some features for uh, if some you have, you have like specific needs for the uh, integration that they can be added like via uh, programming. But already with the built-in module, you're able to do quite a lot. It took me less than two hours to get my setup configured and up and running. So you can see that basically in no time, you're able to uh, export your BOM and item from SOLIDWORKS to NAV. I can now end the uh, presentation and I will let uh, Oli to conclude the uh, webinar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Francois. Let me get back to my screen so yeah so it's it's really um important to to um yeah yeah as Francois said it only took took a couple of hours to configure this this so so i think typically integration projects are, are something that you develop develop a lot even for weeks or months but uh, we really provide a productive sized solution that you can just start using with uh, um, minimal configuration and expand on that um, I want to wrap up by uh, talking a couple of words about our product packaging and pricing. Um, Custom Tools is priced per SOLIDWORKS user as it is an add-on that works inside SOLIDWORKS. So each user who wishes to do these kind of exports to the ERP system or pull in metadata with the search uh, from the ERP uh, directly needs a Custom Tools license on her or his SOLIDWORKS workstation. Now, we uh, sell custom tools in two different flavors, basic and professional. For the ERP connection, you actually need the professional version as basis. You can purchase the professional license from your SOLIDWORKS distributor, or in the case your distributor does not provide custom tools, you can also purchase it directly from us. And actually, I want to point out uh, at uh, this phase, as we have recently launched a new webshop, we actually have a discount campaign to give you a 25% discount on all Custom Tools professional licenses when you buy directly from our website, from our webshop with a credit card. So as said, you need the professional license as basis, and then for your team, you need to have a one-time payment starting from 3,000 euros for your team for the connector. Uh, for that, you need to contact ourselves directly and we'll set up everything for you as agreed. Just head to Custom Tools Info and use the contact form that you can find in the uh, footer section of each page to get in touch with us. So that's it for today's webinar. All we had to show you uh, at this page, this stage. Um, I would like to mention uh, that in our next webinar, we will present you how you can perform um, some of these familiar custom tools operations, um, such as exports, straight from the PDM system. You can connect these with your PDM workflows and such, and, and, and execute them as tasks in PDM. That webinar will take place uh, on the 14th of May, uh, Thursday, same time as today. So I suggest you go ahead and sign up today already at customtools.info. Uh, it's once again completely free and when you register you will uh, automatically receive the recording afterwards even if you for some reason miss the live webinar so so head to custom tools info slash webinars to find out all upcoming webinars along with uh, the registration links so uh, and we're open for additional questions when the recording is stopped 
But first, I want to thank you all for attending this webinar today, and I really hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thank you, Oli. So we have already a couple of uh, questions. So the first yeah. one is, uh,